Well, people, you may have thought we were going to shy away from this video, but we're not. Several days removed from the recent PlayStation State of Play. And PlayStation enthusiasts or just fans of the console like myself, like Cold Blood, are left wondering, what is, what is next for this platform? Are we heading into a certain plateau? Or was this just a bad pacing of the year and PlayStation is solely doing what they said in that apology letter that the two new CEOs sent to the community that they are listening to us and they are rethinking what they're going to do. Um, yeah, there's a lot to discuss. There's only so much we can do in this video. But after this video, join us for a special member stream where cold blood and i are now that the dust has settled now that we got the apology letter from the ceos and now that we can separate the trees from the forest look at the concord gameplay look at the possible effect that astrobots would have and all the other stuff we can totally surmise what this state of play was what it wasn't what it should have what it should have been and make I, I think some reasonable assessments based off of for sure positives that we know of playstation and some definitive red flags but before we get into all that do us a huge favor hit that like button hit that subscribe button this is the spiel where i talk about the latest and greatest um in the gaming world news i talk about it briefly we focus on that before we go to a live show environment um, if you like this stuff again, please hit that like button and check out the links below to follow me. All right. So last week we had the PlayStation state of play. Um, because it was a state of play, many of us did not have high expectations, but then there were leaks. We're going to talk about that a little bit. There were leaks about this state of play and those leaks kind of like grounded a lot of us. But I think at least for me, I'll let Cold Blood talk for himself, like I said in our subsequent stream. I think at least for me, my expectations were anything that's shown here, I'm not going to really be interested in. Um, if I am interested in it, it's going to be a bonus except for Concord. I know you guys heard the content where I had earlier hopes to where because of other stuff that I heard that, um, you know, PlayStation might uh, reveal or even tease the PlayStation 5 Pro. But then in talking to people looking at, you know, past state of plays, I realized that no, that I was setting my expectations too high. And even the people that were referencing that something like that would be coming this year, they had labeled it to a showcase. So that was my ignorance, not understanding the difference between the state of play and the showcase and why we weren't going to see that this time around. That being said, I think I brought my expectations and many of us brought our expectations to a reasonable level where we just simply wanted to see Concord and hope that it was an interesting game because it, it is a new IP. You're taking a big risk with that, but we were hoping at the very least it would be an interesting game that would cater to the hardcore because everything else per the leaks or everything else that's typically with a state of play these last few years um, with PlayStation, they really ain't been for us unless they focus on a particular game like how they did with, I think, Resident Evil 4, um, remake one time and then they focused on uh god of war and they focused on horizon forbidden west those state of plays were dope you know what i mean and they cater to the hardcore but generally a state of play doesn't a showcase is more or less where enthusiasts of what the playstation brand brings to gaming that's where you're going to get your fix okay so i wasn't expecting to get a fixture except for PlayStation hasn't mentioned anything for the holiday season. We don't know. Normally, by now, we already know what's coming out for the holiday season. We don't know this time around. And the only thing that is on the horizon is Concord. This must be for us, right? 
in the words of the great late Charlie Murphy, aren't wrong. Because this is a 5v5 hero shooter in the vein is a mixture of Overwatch and Bungie. And this is the most peculiar thing. Um, even though no one asked for this, right? Like none of the hardcore was looking for this. We're looking for something adventurous, something adventurous, right? To bring us into the holiday season, to absorb our time and something adventurous. Normally you get something like that, even in a year, what, what a year that isn't so great for PlayStation, at least they put out Death Stranding. It was adventurous. You can argue how adventurous it was, how well it was, you know, I, I, I'm not going to argue for or against it. I can be transparent and say it wasn't one of my favorite titles way back when. Um, and But at least the attempt was made to, again, put something adventurous out there for the hardcore consumer. Concord fell flat at that. Not because we're saying that the gameplay looks bad. Nobody is saying that the gameplay is gone off. We're just simply saying that, again, the hardcore for the holiday season was not asking for a 5v5 hero shooter after they already have Overwatch, and Overwatch is already in, like, the top 10 of games played on PlayStation. Uh, when you got Marvel Rivals coming, and that's another hero shooter, nobody asked for another hero shooter that... When you compare it to, I think even Marvel Rivals, but when you compare it to its air apparent influences, which are first and foremost, Overwatch, and secondly, Bungie and some of the gameplay that we witnessed, it was disheartening to see that this game is going to be paid for, right? You're going to have to pay for this game because they're talking about doing a pre-order and there's a beta for the pre-order. When you have, again, both of your influences, Destiny and Overwatch, they're now free. Now, I, I understand when Overwatch launched, um, Overwatch launched and it was paid for at first. I remember that. But then they quickly, I think, changed that because one of Overwatch's elements were going to be from what I understand, PVE. And then I think once that PVE element was removed, like they weren't pursuing that anymore, then they said, you know what? This is just a whatever hero shooter, a PVP hero shooter, we're going to make this free to play. The right move to make and Overwatch has continued to soar because of it. Now I get with Overwatch 2, there's been some disappointment or whatever, it might be on the decline, but it's still getting some heavy rotation. All right. If you want to creep in on that rotation and you're taking leverage from Destiny and leverage from Overwatch, which are both free to play, why is this paid for? Right. Just throws a lot of questions out there. It just makes us like very, very curious on what was the mind state going into this. And you can't help but focus on the fact that um, you got Hiroki Totoki in charge right now. You got um, uh, Hermholst, who, you know, is reporting to him with the other CEO. And I know I keep forgetting this guy's name, and, I, and, I, and I'm sorry about that. I don't blame the new guy, the hardware guy at all. He, he's behind the cloud. He's behind the console. He's done wonderful jobs there. I think that the, the content is coming from a, you know, the remnants of Jim Ryan, who just, let's be honest, he was not great at fanfare. That's why once he finally took reins, he cut it out. He cut it out. He convinced them, no, no more E3s. He convinced the board, no more E3s. We're going to re reduce it to these state of plays or whatever. Then the pandemic happened and it, it made him seem even more genius, right? And what he was doing. But I always tell people, and I'm going to bring this up in this conversation, that accountability is job one. In the moment we've talked about, no more E3s. That kind of let 
Sony off the hook in regards to accountability. Now, listen to me. I get that E3. If you or put it like this, if you want to sympathize with Sony because they had to spend eight million dollars a year to set up a booth. But I mean, that eight million dollars ain't going to make your game. But if you want to all of a sudden be their 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 chief financial officer and say, we can save that eight million dollars, whatever, you go ahead, be my guest. But when you create a dynamic where Sony or any company, not only have they splattered the competition's guts all over the concrete, but then they're not even being held accountable on an annual basis from their fans. Like E3, at the very least, regardless of what their competition was doing, was holding Sony accountable. They had to show you what they were working on and what progress they were making. In the Last of Us um, documentaries, they always talk about, Neil Druckmann in particular talk, talked about the, the pressures of having to have a vertical slice ready for E3. That holds you accountable. And I think what happened was too much of this Twitter fervor got to the fan base because they weren't doing the showcases well at all under Sean Layton, right? They weren't the greatest. They were getting laughed at, and then the 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 um, console fanboys from across the street would make fun of PlayStation, even though they didn't have any games to back up any of their laughter. And the PlayStation, I think, fan base fell into that and said, you know what, we don't need E3. Let's just stay away from E3, because that's not what we do right. When you don't look at the big picture, you, you say something like that, meaning, okay, well, what's going to hold them accountable now? Now, yes, there is a new set of consoles releasing for the new generation going into 2020, 2021. So, of course, they're going to stay on top of it. But now they've completely decimated Xbox. They have decimated them. Nintendo's in a whole nother lane. Nintendo doesn't even have to, they don't come over here. We don't, they, you know, they don't come here. We don't go there. That's the approach. Nintendo's in a whole different lane. Who's to hold you accountable but the consumers? And if you don't put some type of regulatory process in place, I know people hear that and they get all political in their mind. Regulatory? Yeah, when you get, it's not a bad word. You got to put some type of regulatory process in place when it comes to these Fortune 500 companies or these big conglomerates because they'll walk right out, they'll walk all over you. And that regulatory process is, damn it, every year, show me what you're working on. Show me the progress via E3. Now, I'm not saying bring E3 back, but again, Sony, as far as it comes to like video games, as far as selling, uh, having a platform and publishing games or whatever, they're right. They're, they're second behind Tencent. Okay. I think it's time that Sony has a on-site dedicated showcase annually sort of like a blizzcon sony is so huge they are so massive they are so instrumental to the gaming community and the gaming market altogether. i mean for instance look look at what happened with xbox's duds that they put over on they put them on playstation they skyrocket from 160th all the way up to the top 10 just because you're releasing it on playstation PlayStation is so integral to the gaming market. They need a dedicated showcase that the hardcore know is going to be there at a specific time annually. There is no excuse. It ain't gotta be E3. It could be Sony Con, whatever. Uh, SIE Con, whatever you wanna call it. Greatness Con. They have to be held accountable. When they're not held accountable, stuff like this happens. Now, as it relates to Concord and Astrobot, I know a lot of you are listening to this. You're like, MM, it's not that serious. It's not that bad. I'm not saying, look, Concord, when I look at the gameplay, I would pick that up before I would pick up um, Overwatch or Destiny any day. It looks fun. It looks engaging. It, it, it looks cool. Here's the problem. I don't want to play that right now. I'm, I'm done with, 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 the, with the PvP hero shooter or, or something in, in that space. I've tried Overwatch. I've tr played PvP on Destiny. I've been there, done that. At least if you had some PvE in there, some exploration, something adventurous in the game, I think people would have been, would have had a warmer reception to it. And I get you don't want duplication because then that would just make you a Destiny, you know, version two. But damn it, you got to do something. 
and by you showing us this spaceship and people think that they're traveling to different stars and stuff like that and it only to get a 5v5 shooter that's going to have some type of cinematic weekly to progress the story like look playstation hardcore enthusiasts don't want to hear that so what is the answer who has the answers do i have the answers well i got some suggestions and i'll and i'll share them with you i'll share with you many of the suggestions that i have the thing is is that um are you ready for them? are you ready for what i have to say uh playstation enthusiasts can you take the criticism we'll see let's talk about this join us in the member session if you're not a member hit that join button right now or what you can do is wait for the card to pop up on the left and once that card pops up on the left for this uh member stream that we're gonna have click on it and become a member through that okay hope to see you there can't wait till next time have a wonderful gaming day peace